If you're watching this video, you most likely have an interest in animation, and one of the biggest linking factors between fans that I've seen is that oftentimes, if they had the opportunity to make a show, they would. While celebrity ran shows have existed for a long time, influencer ran shows are incredibly new in the grand scheme. You bust your butt to become someone that a large amount of people can enjoy and get the opportunity of a lifetime to take your ideas, get a bigger budget, and create something truly memorable. After watching all eight episodes of the second season of Oddballs, it was not that. Think about some of the most recent media that's been released around the time of this video coming out. You have stuff that's amazing, like the Puss in Boots movie. You have stuff that's awful, like Velma. Despite both of these pieces of medias being in different solar systems, I've heard a lot of things about both of them, because it triggered an emotion in someone, whether awe, disgust, happiness, or anger. And to me, that's what makes them not boring. As bad as Velma is, it had a lot of things to speak about. As boring as Oddballs is, relative to most shows, there's very little here, which is actually the biggest problem. If you did not watch the first season of Oddballs, the first episode starts out with James and Max creating a smart toaster, but leaving it to be abandoned at the end of that episode. Throughout the season, we are introduced to a new character named Echo, who traveled from the future to stop whatever created her food-related dystopian timeline. But it wasn't until the last episode, where Echo would learn that James is responsible for setting up the chain of events that creates her bad timeline. Doesn't that sound interesting? Time travel, mystery, an action-packed boss battle. The last episode ends on a cliffhanger to set up excitement for this very thing. And I even said in my first video that the quality of this second season is dependent on how they solve the cliffhanger. Out of these eight episodes, how many episodes do you even think that they bring this up? Mind you, one of the three main characters specifically traveled back in time to solve this. One. One episode. I told you not to touch my pulse generator! Now I need to make a whole new one or we're defenseless against Toasty! But first, why does it even matter if Oddballs doesn't want to have a story arc throughout the episodes? Well, that's actually a simple answer. You have the seven episodes that are primarily episodic and the one episode that follows through on their season one cliffhanger. I did enjoy that James found his voice as a main character and the episodes were a lot more consistent. So in that aspect, this season is marginally better. Max, Echo, and Mr. McFly were also solid. I even found one of these seven episodes to be incredibly fun, the one that you're seeing on the screen here, and I hope to speak about it soon. The problem I run into as a whole when it comes to this season is that Oddballs misses out on the fun that can be had with episodic shows, which makes it hard to speak about without just telling you exactly what happens. No matter your opinion on modern Spongebob between the references, the exaggerated animations, and exploring different character dynamics, or bringing lesser used characters to the forefront, the show is doing something. And how you feel about that something depends on how you feel about what the show has become today. Even if Teen Titans Go is generally considered to be a mix to bad show between the DC references, the mixing and matching of Titan-centric dynamic episodes, the specials, the crossovers, the movie. If you're a fan of it, you have a lot to dive into. And I already know what you're thinking. You know, Jay, that merch shelf underneath this video is some fire merch. But hold off on that. You can always visit alphaj.show slash merch after this. What you should be thinking is that's an unfair comparison. Those shows have been running for years and years and has seasons upon seasons. Fine. Mau Mau, one season. You learn about Mau Mau's past, Adora Bat's hidden secret, the lore of Pure Heart Valley, with crazy boss battles, fun comedy, and amazing animation. Primarily episodic. The Ghost of Molly McGee, one season so far. We learn about Molly's family and traditions, specifically her mother and grandmother's relationship, but also the ghost world, the town of Brighton's history, and even see dynamics shared within the family, but also with Libby, Andrea, and Jeff. Primarily episodic, but has an ongoing arc. I'll even throw in Robot and Monster in the mix. One season, primarily episodic, we learn about Robot's family and their specific dynamic with Robot, the common areas of the town, their favorite sport, the obsession with bacon, Robot and Monster's goals in life, and the funniest animated sequences that Nickelodeon has to offer. All of these shows give you so much to work with despite being episodic and just wanting to be a quick 11 minutes of your time. So am I saying that Oddballs has nothing to work with? Absolutely not. There are some things that were cool to see in this season. We learn in the seventh episode that the mayor of the city is a dog, and this dog was a fun character, being very abrasive without saying a word, having a fun dynamic with James throughout this episode. We learn about the school, particularly with Stuart, who serves as a low-key MVP of the season alongside Mr. McFly. I even enjoyed the technique of writing that they chose, which made cliche ideas appear fresh, such as taking the body swap plot sort of episode and mixing it with the bull 
fully plot episode within body swap or mixing together two ideas the flower egg baby that you have to take care of plot with the murder mystery plot within partners <laughs> Take a new partner so you can succeed. I'll do the same. However, as much praise as I can give this show, and I do want to give the show all the praise that it deserves, there is an upper ceiling because outside of this minute or so of praise, that is the result of me picking the odds and ends of an otherwise empty and boring second season. The jokes are paint by numbers, we don't get to learn that much about the minor characters, and the few interesting aspects and tidbits just appear for that one specific episode only. I just wish that the show felt more comfortable pushing their limits and making something really cool and memorable that can also be episodic because otherwise, a lot of this is just noise. But then we get to the part that's even more unsatisfying, the actual plot arc. We, the audience, are left in suspense, where the high stakes of changing history so that a dystopian future doesn't come via a toaster is intentionally put on pause for seven episodes. So if you were going into this season wanting to see a build up to that grand battle that they oh so generously built up to in that first season, you get practically nothing here. Which is disappointing because that is specifically what you left us at the end of the first season. It makes Toasty an afterthought, despite being so relevant within both seasons. Seasons. What little build there is, is the aforementioned moments where Echo says that she's building something to stop Toasty, all in the background. However, she gives up very quickly, claiming that James continues to break every solution that she's building. The last episode of this season, Toasty's goodbye, is just… okay. While Toasty's adolescent transformation was an interesting variant to see, the action was very odd, often having this start and stop flow to it because James, in universe, is not a strong or menacing person. Echo, both in this episode and this season, felt like an afterthought, which is weird because her reason for being here heavily revolves around stopping the events that lead into the future she very clearly stated she doesn't enjoy. She spends a good portion of this last episode just celebrating the fact that James admitted to being wrong, which makes a little bit of sense for her character, but it also waters down her actual motivations heavily, making it very egocentric to James. I'm gonna prove it right now by stopping Declan with the thing he's always wanted. Love. Ah <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I'm gonna miss this when you're dead. It almost makes me feel like part of enjoying the show would require me to be a fan of James, which admittedly I can see how that sounds logical on paper, but this show is not on his channel. This show is on a platform with several other animated shows that are competing for a broad demographic. The first season did such a good job building Echo up while still being episodic. It's like with Miss Chalice within Cuphead, where she did not dominate the show but she made a memorable appearance. By the way, within Cuphead, each of the three seasons or parts, whatever you want to label it, they were written in a way where it was largely episodic but had lots of lore, memorable characters, riskier ideas, and whatever they set up in one season is at the very least addressed in a more satisfying way within the next one. So that just leads us back to where this video started, speaking about a dream, where so many people would love to be in James's position, having the opportunity to make riskier but dream projects that require a lot of resources. That's why I want Oddballs to succeed more than anything else because it opens the door for you, me, and anyone else to see that there are a lot of creative people out here in this space who may have built audiences that would love to see them take on riskier ideas and bring what resonated in one space to another space, and all they're missing is the resources to tackle it. However, I don't feel like Oddballs cuts through the noise and provides a memorable experience because of how safe and boring it ends up. So even though I have a lot of criticisms about this show, what I truly hope is that Oddballs finds its fans to continue for another season so that I become the odd one out.